Hello wonderful person, this is Anton, and today we're going to be talking about yet another unusual discovery of some sort of a really large structure from our own galaxy, the Milky Way. And as you might know, there have been quite a lot of these discoveries in the last few months. Naturally, the question here is why? And the answer is, well, because of the new telescopes providing all of the data. And some of these telescopes, such as the iconic ESA's Gaia telescope, has been doing such an amazing job in the last few years that we suddenly had a huge amount of new discoveries coming in just a few months, with many of these discoveries being right next door to us. And we've talked about many of them in 2021 and you can actually find them at some point somewhere above my head. They should be popping up throughout this video and some of them are also in the description below. But this time the scientists have found another unusual structure and potentially the largest structure we've found in the last few years. They refer to it as Maggie, Maggie filament technically. You can kind of see it right there and this is where we are located. So essentially Maggie or Maggie filament is one of the longest filaments, hydrogen filaments, discovered to date. It's also relatively far from us. It's about 55,000 light years away from us and forms a structure that's nearly 4,000 light years in length and approximately 130 light years in width. And in the past, all of the other similar filaments or clouds discovered in the Milky Way have always been approximately 800 light years in length, which is about a fifth of the size of what this is. But the thing is, because in this case we're not looking at stars, but are actually looking at gas, the scientists cannot use the data from Gaia telescope. They have to use data from somewhere else. In this case, they use the data from the survey known as THOR based on the Carl G. Jansky Very Large Array data that was combined into this survey that you can also find in the description below. And what this survey did was essentially look for various hydrogen clouds, various gas clouds, around our galaxy. And in order to find certain types of hydrogen, they normally do so by looking at what's known as the hydrogen line, also known as 21 centimeter line or the frequency that's produced in the atomic hydrogen when the electron here undergoes a spin change and then releases the photon of about 1.4 gigahertz or about a wavelength of 21 centimeters. This can be actually seen from everywhere and can even be detected using amateur astronomy tools. For example, it can actually be detected using a relatively powerful Wi-Fi antenna. And it has been done in the past where you can actually find really large clouds around the galaxy. But this type of hydrogen is slightly different from what we have here on Earth. This is what's referred to as the atomic hydrogen. It only contains a proton and an electron. This does not actually make planets and stars and so on. It doesn't really make anything yet. What the planets and stars are usually made out of is referred to as the molecular hydrogen. It's the molecule that's made up of two atoms of hydrogen. And that's one of the bigger mysteries in the universe. How does an atomic hydrogen turn into molecular hydrogen that's required for the production of stars? Or in other words, what causes H1 to then become H2? And it's a really important mystery to solve because, as we know today, most of the molecular clouds that then end up creating stars and condense into larger and larger chunks of matter, all of them contain this and not really as much of this. And so it just so happens that Maggie that was recently discovered is essentially the largest filament of atomic hydrogen. It's not molecular hydrogen that's usually responsible for forming planets and stars. And in case you're wondering, Maggie is just a diminutive term for Magdalena or Rio Magdalena, the name of the longest river in Colombia, the home country of one of the researchers behind the paper. And because this is the longest river, and this seems to be the longest hydrogen filament discovered so far, there is obviously some connection and thus the name. But for astronomers studying the evolution of galaxies and evolution of stars, this is a big mystery. At the moment, nobody can actually explain how such a long filament of atomic and not molecular hydrogen could be produced to begin with. And also how it got into this location where it is. It's not really in the middle of the galaxy, and instead is actually found approximately 1600 light years below the galactic plane. Which maybe could be explained by some sort of a magnetic field or possibly magnetic lines creating the actual filament and allowing it to exist in this location, but at the moment it's really not known. Mostly because it's also kind of far away to study all of this. But it's really because of the location away from the plane that the scientists were able to discover this filament. And also for one other important reason. So remember, we're talking about hydrogen gas that's everywhere. If you look at the galaxy, you're going to see it absolutely in every direction. So how exactly do you actually tell that there is a structure here that's connected that seems to form one single object? Well, here the scientists did something relatively clever that obviously has been done before. 
they looked at the overall velocity of a certain region of space and tried to see if any of the gas there was moving at a relatively similar speed. And here you can actually see a lot of the velocity changes are marked in different colors here. With everything in color blue showing us the velocity of approximately 54 kilometers per second. And so essentially they discovered this one really really long filament that was more or less moving at the same speed, possessed relatively similar properties, similar temperature, and seemed to be moving in the same direction around the galaxy. And because of its location underneath the galactic plane, and because all of this gas also had similar velocity, it sort of stood out from the background of all of the other gas present here. And to the scientists in this paper, this only suggested that this was a coherent single structure. It was what we usually refer to as the galactic structure, with this one being really really long as well. But because the main reason for studying these is to really determine how this gas then turns into the molecular gas and starts to create stars, this is a pretty important finding. They've already discovered that approximately 8% of all of the mass here is already molecular hydrogen and has now become the gas that normally produces stars. How that happened is obviously unknown, but it's a really important structure to then try to analyze more in order to understand how all of this happens in typical galaxies. And in general, it's actually easier to understand that this is a pre-molecular cloud. Or basically, it's not this yet. It's not a cloud that's going to be developing stars, but it's sort of like the baby version of this. And the scientists realized that at several locations in this filament, it already started to sort of coalesce into slightly larger structures. Or basically, at several points, it's already creating these large clouds that could potentially become this one day. And after this, they will start producing stars and new planets. Also, by mass, this is approximately 720,000 masses of the Sun. So, if this ends up producing several molecular clouds, it's going to end up producing thousands and thousands of different stars eventually. But at the moment, it's also unclear what exactly created this and how any of this works. One implication here, or I guess one suggestion, is that maybe all of this is somehow controlled by the magnetic field of the galaxy, and once the power of the atoms and basically power of gravity overcomes the magnetic field, that's when the filament collapses into various clouds and starts producing stars. But the actual process is still barely understood and a lot of scientists are really hoping to learn more about this by studying these objects or very similar objects and thus figuring out how the evolutionary process of star formation works in typical galaxies. It's also not really clear where this gas even came from. Is this like the primordial gas from the beginning of the universe or is this more of a result of recycling of gas after a typical supernova that somehow produces atomic hydrogen. In other words, still so many questions, not really a lot of answers. But the discovery of this superstructure at the moment provides many opportunities to answer different mysteries of the galaxy and of course of the universe itself, making this one of the most exciting structures discovered in the Milky Way so far. But for now that's all we know. Once we discover something else about Maggie or similar structures, I'll make sure to follow this up with another video. Until then, check out some of the previous videos about other structures discovered in 2021 and come back tomorrow to learn something else, maybe subscribe, maybe share this with someone who has learned about space and sciences, and maybe support this channel on Patreon by joining a channel membership or by buying the wonderful person t-shirt you can find in the description. Stay wonderful, I'll see you tomorrow, and as always, bye-bye.